Hello, I'm Professor Frank Lyons, Dean of Research and Impact at Ulster University in Northern Ireland. Thank you for the invitation to speak at this conference on music and inclusion at University of Music and Arts, Graz, and for your interest in this work. In my presentation, entitled Inclusive Creativity, Music Composition, Performance and Education, I will highlight a number of case studies to illustrate inclusive practice in composition and performance, and will discuss the key role of higher education in expanding the pool of creative talent working in this space. Given that this conference promotes accessibility, I've adopted suggested guidelines in this presentation, where I will describe the small number of images and audio clips used as examples. The inclusive creativity concept aims to explore creative technologies to level the playing field for people of all ages and abilities who wish to compose and perform music. And my chosen case studies will demonstrate how practice-led research is the key driver for realising the goals of this concept. The case studies will discuss how musicians with a range of disabilities are driving inclusive practice in a variety of musical environments. It might be useful at this point to provide context to consider some of the barriers and solutions to inclusive creative practice. Barriers include the nature of a given disability, for example, impaired cognitive or motor skills, the accessibility or inaccessibility of the creative tools and the level of engagement with creative processes. Potential solutions include use of digital instruments and interfaces, which can be highly flexible, powerful and transferable, and the exploration of the potential of improvisation, which is often misunderstood and under-researched. Some historical context around my work on inclusive creativity might also be informative at this point. I joined Drake Music Northern Ireland in 1999, where I devised and delivered a training programme for music tutors who worked for that organisation, and where I founded the Ward Ensemble, one of the first inclusive music ensembles in the world at that time. This ensemble made many advances in breaking out of the normal circuit for arts and disability groups, performing at high profile mainstream international festivals, such as Sonority's Contemporary Music Festival in Belfast, Northern Ireland. In 2000, I began to work on the Share Music UK courses, devised by the late visionary Dr. Michael Swallow, where concepts of artistic inclusion across art forms, including dance and music, and exploration of creative technologies generated many innovations. Here I also met the inspirational Sophia Alexanderson, who you've just heard from, who is now CEO of Share Music Sweden. The organisation which she established and with whom I have collaborated on many artistic research projects. I am also honoured to currently sit on the International Advisory Board of that pathfinding body. In 2003 I took up a post as Head of Music at Ulster University and immediately established a strand of practice-led research around inclusion in music making. 
Inspired by the findings of this research, I introduced a number of modules in inclusive arts practice in undergraduate and postgraduate taught courses at Ulster University. My own practice-led research is focused on composition and from 2004 I collaborated on the creation of a number of seminal works for inclusive ensembles including Rush for the Wired Ensemble and the renowned violinist Dara Morgan which was shortlisted for a British Composer Award in 2005. A key achievement of work from this period was the growing mainstream appreciation of highly experimental music making by artists with disabilities using cutting edge technologies. Working with colleagues such as Sophia Alexanderson, we began to construct an international network of collaborators working in the field of inclusive arts and creative technologies. This approach, we believe, is key to efficient dissemination of good practice and avoidance of constant reinvention of the wheel and the associated waste of resources. This research network has driven a number of productive partnerships and collaborations with academic institutions, charitable organisations, government bodies and festivals, generating a wealth of creative output, innovative research findings, exemplars of good practice and, significantly, over €500,000 of funding. Partners and funders include Ulster University, the Royal Irish Academy of Music, Walt City Music, Share Music Sweden, Drake Music, St Magnus Festival, Setúbal Festival, Future Screens Northern Ireland, the National Creativity Fund, the Arts Council of Northern Ireland, the Kalust Gulbenkian Foundation, Department for the Economy in Northern Ireland, Department of Communities in Northern Ireland, British Council, Performing Rights Society Foundation, the Arts and Humanities Research Council, Smart Lab, University College Dublin, and the Social Innovation Fund. I feel it is important to publicly acknowledge these partners and the huge contribution they make to the expansion and enhancement of inclusion in arts practice. So, the inclusive creativity concept underpins a number of research teams, a developing body of creative practice, emerging creative technologies, and a variety of education programs. Before presenting case studies to show the concept in action, I'd like to explore some of the key components of inclusive creativity. Firstly, the utilisation of accessible creative technologies, which for us fall into two main categories, industry standard off-the-shelf hardware and software, and bespoke custom-designed hardware and software. Industry standard hardware and software includes physical controllers, such as Ableton Push, which interfaces with the Ableton Live software. Other examples include iPads, running music apps such as Launchpad and Thumb Jam. A number of PhD research projects undertaken at Ulster University in particular have produced bespoke custom-designed hardware controllers 
such as Dr. Brandon McCloskey's Ingrid, which was a prize winner in the International Margaret Goodman competition in Atlanta. And currently, Lewis Smith is working on a doctoral project which explores participatory design to develop custom virtual reality software and hardware solutions for use in inclusive composition and performance scenarios. Second, our teams have developed a range of creative processes which underpin our approach to inclusive music making using these technologies, which are focused on collaboration and co-creation, encouraging experimentation, challenging convention, and exploring improvisation. An innovative example of process is the conductology methodology, a conducting approach developed and patented by Dr. Denise White and used to encourage and inspire inclusion in improvisation. I will now present a number of case studies to demonstrate inclusive creativity in action. The first of these is focused on Acoustronic, an inclusive ensemble founded in 2015, who meet weekly for rehearsals. Until the Covid pandemic they met face to face in Ulster University in Derry, and since May they meet online using Zoom. This group comprises musicians with a range of abilities, including those with cerebral palsy, learning disabilities and autism. The musicians compose and perform using mostly digital instruments. However, a number of the players use acoustic instruments. This combination prompted the group decision to call the ensemble Acoustronic. At the core of their working methods is collaboration, as seen in the co-creation of new works, group improvisations and their performances with other ensembles. Musicians in Acoustronic have performed internationally in mainstream festivals at prestigious venues, including in the Great Hall at the Wall City Music Festival, the International Jazz Festival in Derry, and in the Colust Gulbenkian Auditorium at the Partice Festival in Lisbon. Acoustronic have won many awards including the Arts and Culture People's Award and they were chosen as Ensemble in Residence at the Royal Irish Academy of Music, the first inclusive ensemble to be appointed to such a role in a national conservatory anywhere in the world. Acoustronic recently secured a highly prized Arts Council of Northern Ireland Commission for a new work to be premiered in 2021. I will talk about that later in the presentation. The 2017 Non Zero Sum project, commissioned through the prestigious Performing Rights Society Foundation, or PRSF, evidences the collaborative approach and use of new technologies previously referred to. Acoustronic joined forces with the professional musicians of the Bena Yunus String Quartet to form the Non Zero Sum Ensemble to co create and perform a new work entitled Non Zero Sum. 
This title is derived from game theory and describes a scenario where players can engage in competition without there being an outright winner or loser. This concept reflects the inclusive nature of the ensemble and underpins how the players interact in the piece. Over the course of a year, weekly workshops were used to co-create the new piece with this ensemble, exploring combinations of acoustic and digital, industry standard and custom designed instruments to generate acoustic and electroacoustic sound worlds. Key to the research investigation were questions on how to devise innovative methodologies to communicate musical ideas and to guide the performance. These included flexible notation, use of coloured cue cards and a specially designed real-time drawing app to drive improvisation. In these improvisations, using a co-created palette of musical gestures, the players respond to graphic symbols drawn in real-time using colour and shape coding. The next slide features a video extract from the first performance of Non-Zero Sum and illustrates the musicians using combinations of acoustic and electronic instruments and the resulting sound worlds and shows the players improvising in response to coloured cue cards. This is Non-Zero Sum. The non-zero sum project comprised a number of related strands in addition to the composition and performance of the new work, including training in inclusive concepts for young composers and workshop rehearsals of new repertoire created by them at several high profile festivals, including St Magnus International Festival. Setubal Music Festival and the Walled City Music Festival. The non-zero sum ensemble have subsequently premiered 11 new works by young composers, all of whom were writing for an inclusive ensemble for the first time. In March 2019, the non-zero ensemble took another step in driving inclusion by developing new technological and methodological solutions to the problem of multi-site networked performance, playing non-zero sum in the Royal Northern College Chamber Music Festival, with the Benny Yunus Quartet, Quartet located in Manchester and the Acoustronic Ensemble located in Derry. This slide shows an image of an inclusive creativity composer workshop held at the Wall City Music Festival in Derry in 2017, in which six new pieces by postgraduate composers were workshopped. The photo shows composer Lewis Smith working with the non zero sum ensemble on the challenges of writing for new digital instruments 
and of notating ideas for players who come from a range of musical backgrounds. In his piece, Galvanised. In 2018, Acoustronic broke more new ground with an invited performance at the City of Derry International Jazz Festival. Here they demonstrated their musical versatility by performing with some of Europe's leading jazz musicians, including Darren Beckett on drums and Scott Flanagan on piano, in the world premiere of Coruscation by Lewis Smith. The following short extract from the piece shows the musicians in a freely structured group improvisation with acoustronic musicians Marie Anderson, Jay Hagen, John Lynch, Sean Healy and David Meenan using custom designed digital instruments based on leap motion interfaces and software developed in Max MSP. This is an extract from Coruscation. The next case study to be considered is the Lycalia project which was co-led by the Royal Irish Academy of Music and Ulster University in association with Athlone Institute of Technology, Cork School of Music and the Cope Foundation. Funding was secured for Lycalia from Creative Ireland's National Creativity Fund and the Social Innovation Fund by Royal Irish Academy of Music Director Professor Deborah Kelleher and their Head of Outreach Brendan Breslin. Due to their groundbreaking achievements Acoustronic was selected as the lead ensemble for this project with the intention that three similar inclusive groups would be formed using the Acoustronic model, resulting in a resident inclusive ensemble in each of the four provinces on the island of Ireland. The musicians from each of these groups would then come together to form the Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland, one of the first orchestras led by disabled musicians in Europe. Researchers from the Ulster University Inclusive Creativity Team, led by Dr Denise White and Lewis Smith, facilitated workshops in conductology, the new inclusive conducting method developed by Dr White, and in composition and performance using virtual reality tools developed by Lewis Smith. The following extract from the first Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland performance shows the creative use of virtual reality technologies and of conductology to guide the improvisation.
Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland. I will now move on to the importance of sharing inclusive creativity concepts in higher education. Key to creating a skilled pipeline of graduates to work in the inclusive sector and to continue the production of cutting-edge research has been the focus on delivering specialised course provision at Ulster University. In 2003, course content based on inclusive creativity concepts was introduced and is currently delivered in undergraduate, taught postgraduate degrees and in PhDs. Core to the popularity and success of these courses, which have generated upwards of 500 graduates, has been the facilitation of student work on live projects, giving them a sense of the workplace in the real world. So, for example, the Acoustronic Ensemble work with teams of students which combine varying levels of experience and expertise. These student teams comprise undergraduate, taught postgraduate, postgraduate research and postdoctoral levels and students are essentially mentored by musicians in the Acoustronic group. This approach supports peer learning amongst the students and draws on the expertise developed by the musicians, contributing to their sense of achievement, confidence and well-being. Inclusive creativity concepts applied in the higher education environment have been successful in generating interest from musicians of the future in inclusive music making and has addressed the challenge of increasing the numbers of skilled graduates able to work in inclusive arts environments. So, I will now list some of the present priorities and areas of focus for inclusive creativity. We are devising inclusive creative responses to the COVID-19 crisis. More on that next. We are consolidating and expanding our network. We are further developing the Lecalia Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland project. We are continuing to train composers and performers. We continue to develop new creative technologies. We are supporting the generation of new repertoire. And we are continuing to further undertake world-class research. Current activity is, of course, being undertaken in the shadow of the COVID pandemic. However, in many ways, the pandemic has levelled the playing field for the disabled musicians with whom we collaborate, with everyone now having to work virtually with exactly the same tools. We are currently working on a new piece, commissioned with support from the Arts Council of Northern Ireland, entitled Zoom Time. This ambitious and substantial piece is for an inclusive ensemble combining Acoustronic and the Ulster Symphony Orchestra. We've been collaborating on the creation of this new work using virtual networking tools, with the premiere due to take place in March 2021, probably virtually, 
at the World City Music Festival. The image on the slide now showing is from a recent online rehearsal and shows members of a Kustronic working virtually with Ableton Live software. So, in conclusion, the innovative and creative applications of new technologies at the core of inclusive creativity generate fresh opportunities for engagement, participation and ownership in music making for all levels of ability. Thank you for your attention.